Hi, my name is John from Japanese Knife Imports, and today I want to show you a new line that we have from Geshin Heiji. Over the last year and a half or so, uh, we've been working with Nagaya Heiji to develop a new line of semi stainless Kuruuchi Damascus. Uh, a lot of our customers love the, the Kuruuchi finish, and uh, a lot of them love the Damascus finish. And one year, a couple of years back actually, when we were spending time with Nagaya Heiji in his workshop, um, we saw some work that he had done with some very cool carbon Kuruuchi Damascus that I thought was amazing. And I asked him if he could do the same in uh, a semi stainless steel. And he wasn't sure if he could, but he said he'd give it a shot. And so he tried and tried and tried. And uh, a little while back, he had sent us a prototype, and I had been testing it out for the last many months. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed it. And so finally, we convinced him to start production on some knives for us. Uh, that are our new line of uh, Geshin Heiji, Kuruuchi, Damascus, uh, Yoba knives, double bevel knives, Wagyutos, and Wapetis. And we're starting out kind of small with this series, but I just kind of want to show you some of the knives that we have here. So, over here you can see a 240mm semi stainless Wagyuto. It has the same burnt chestnut octagon handle that I have on a lot of knives nowadays. And the reason that I use this handle so much is that I really love the, the shape and feel and weight of this handle. Uh, it's a little bit heavier and more dense than whole wood. It also has a nice texture to it, so it retains its grip really well when it's wet. Uh, as you can see from the, from the Geshin Heiji knives, they taper from the spine to the tip very well. So they're really thick here when it enters the handle, but it quickly tapers down. And that initial thickness actually makes it very comfortable when you're holding the knife in a pinch grip your finger rests on top of that area. It also gives the knife a little bit more weight and a little bit more rigidity. So you can see it's a very stiff knife, not so much bending or flexing here. His knives also have uh, a kind of grind where he works down from, from a shinobi line down to the edge in a convex way. And uh, it looks very pretty. And so here, you can see that there is Damascus finish along the edge of the knife. And uh, over here, in the blackish finish, you can see still the Kuruchi, uh, but you can see the Damascus underneath it. And it comes out with this kind of bronze coppery look, which is just really, really beautiful. So this is the 240mm Kuruchi Damascus Semi Stainless Wagyuto. Over here, we have the 210mm. It's worth mentioning that knives from Nakai Heiji uh, in our Gishin Heiji line run a little bit long. And so the 240mm is actually just a little bit shy of what a normal 270mm Wagyuto might be from uh, Sahai, for example. Uh, the 210mm is just a little bit shy of what you might see in a 240mm Wagyuto from Sahai. Uh, again, same kind of thing. Uh, burnt chestnut octagon handle uh, and that beautiful Kuruji Damascus finish with the coppery look to it as you go. And that same taper and still a relatively rigid knife. Uh, these knives, with this kind of grind, they actually end up being very thin behind the edge. And the, the tip area is just thin overall, so it allows the tip to be used for very delicate, detail-oriented work. And the heel is a little bit thicker and can be used for some harder work. The steel in these knives is, is really hard, and it holds its edge really well. But the, the best part about it is that it's not particularly difficult to sharpen, and it takes an amazing edge. For anyone that's ever used uh, knives from, from Nakai Heiji, and especially in our Gishin Heiji line, uh, you know the, the kind of edge retention that you get from these knives is really something special and the joy in sharpening them is also something else. Uh, it's, it's really maybe one of the most enjoyable double bevel knives that I have, I have to sharpen. I just love sharpening them. Um, and, and they hold up pretty well to professional abuse. Uh, as the steel is harder, it is worth mentioning that it can chip and so it is something that you have to be cognizant of when you're using this. Uh, the same with any harder steel knife. When you get into that 62, 63, 64 range on the Rapa hardness scale, the knives do become uh, a little bit brittle when you're banging them against your boards. Uh, so you want to be very careful of not twisting your knife while you're cutting with it, or slamming down on stuff, or hacking away at things. Not that you would ever do that with these knives, but just something to be uh, kind of aware of as you go. Uh, the last knife that we have in our initial run of this series is 150 millimeter uh, Wapeti. And the reason that I get a lot of these 150 millimeter Wapetis is I think they're a very useful size uh, for a petty knife. Uh, in this size, you can do not only in-hand work, but you can also break down chicken 
and uh, fish, assuming that you're not cutting through the heavy bones with it, because it has that, that length, it's a, a usable length for those kinds of tasks. Um, I haven't really found much of a difference between this and a smaller knife as far as in-hand work goes. Uh, once you get used to the movements of in-hand work, it's all pretty much the same. You can do the same thing with the, with the Wagyu dog if need be, but the slightly shorter blade height does make it a little bit easier. Uh, this is actually a style that uh, Sarah and I have at home, a uh, similar knife. Uh, and we use this size and this shape a lot, uh, especially in a home kitchen. Um, when I was cooking in professional kitchens as well, though, I, I did use this kind of shape and size a lot. You can see here it has that same distal taper, that unique distal taper that you see. I, it's actually a feature of blacksmiths that have trained in, uh, in Niigata, in Sancho. A lot of them have this same kind of taper along the spine. Uh, so whether or not they continue to live in Niigata, this is just something that they take away from that. And again, that, that grind that allows it to be thin behind the edge, but still have some kind of rigidity to the knife overall. Um, all of the, the Geshin Heiji knives we've been ordering lately, and especially this series, uh, they all come with sandalwood sayas. And uh, I really like the way that the sayas come from, uh, from Naka Heiji nowadays. I think they're really beautiful and elegant and simple. Uh, not anything crazy fancy, but definitely, for me, a little bit nicer than the, the whole wood size that we see with a lot of other things. Anyways, I just wanted to take this time to introduce you to our new line from, uh, from Nagaya Heiji. Um, and also, um, Sarah wanted me to, to share with you a little update for those of you that helped us out, um, or helped Nagaya Heiji out when the earthquake hit Japan. We raised a lot of money for him and, and sent it over, and recently, uh, he shared with us that he finally uh, figured out exactly what he was going to do with that and so they built a new storage garage and a new shed so that they can keep all of their working materials safe and a lot of their equipment safe and uh, he, he asked us to thank uh, all of our customers and friends and family that helped out and uh, so thank you very much and uh, have a great day.